apparently uh, Christine Lagarde, head of the European Central Bank, the famous former criminal, she got pranked. And supposedly in it, she talks a little bit about CBDCs. I haven't watched it yet, so about to hit play. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can, can hear you me? very well. Okay, yeah, Madam President. I'm glad to see you, glad to hear you. I'm concerned about the economic situation in Europe, that uh, you know that this assistance to Ukraine depends on it, and some countries are already openly saying that internal problems are more important to them than uh, Ukraine. So I just would like to ask you how the things in Europe as a whole, how did the crisis hit, uh, so what is... So I already like this, he goes, and they're saying that internal problems are more important than Ukraine. Like, what are you going to do about this, Madam President? <laughs> well, we have an issue is on inflation because of the bottlenecks that have survived the end of COVID. We are seeing prices that have initially gone up only in the area of energy, and then gradually through fertilizers, in particular to food, and now on a much broader basis. So the inflation that we had hoped would be transitory has continued much longer than thought, and at a much higher level than expected. Mm. So as a result of that, all central banks, and the ECB is no exception, have to take measures in order to reduce inflation so that people do not suffer from high prices and we have a more stable uh, economy. As a result, we have started raising interest rates, which you know, were negative, minus 50 basis points uh, about a year ago, and which are now at uh, 2% for the most uh, frequently used uh, interest rates. So we have growth that is low. We have prices that are too high that we have to bring down. That's, that's the situation that we are at the moment. Why do you think um, uh, how Russia was low growth, high prices? That is the situation. Was able to overcome overcome the sanctions policy. I'm told the sanctions are hitting the European economy and the euro. Uh, I think more than we expect expected. And, yeah, uh, question. So are the sanctions working, or is Europe uh, shooting itself in the foot? Russia's GDP has grown. It is uh, now the ninth in the world. How do you assess the policy of um, the Central Bank of Russia and, and uh, head of uh, Russia's uh, uh, Central Bank Elvira and the Bulina? They she's managed to, more. to save the rubble. And why? How? Why she do doesn't you like what she's hearing. I think Elvira uh, yeah, she like what she's hearing. Uh, is a very good uh, Central Bank governor. She very quickly understood what the situation was, and she increased interest rates massively. And that was, at the time, the right response in order to make sure that inflation was not going to go through the roof, and in order to make sure that people who had invested in Russia, essentially Russians, would keep the money in Russia. So she managed that very well in the early days. And as a result of that, inflation went up, but not very much, and went back down again. So she did a magnificent job. I have no, you know, no hesitation to say that. Mm. I do think that the sanctions are biting, not as much as we had expected, true. Mm. And I also think that the technological barriers that are, now, that are now imposed on Russia will also have an effect on their growth and on their business model. The problem with the energy prices, as I see it, and I'm not an energy expert, is that they still manage to sell a lot of their energy, whether it is oil or whether it is gas, to other countries than those countries that apply the sanctions and certainly outside of the European Union. When they sell to India, when they sell to China, when mm. they sell to the Far East, well, they, they, they manage to get uh, currencies in, and I don't know whether they get renminbi, whether they get uh, rupees or what, but they certainly manage to sell and to bring money. Moving away from dollars. I, I mean, uh, how do you think the position of, of the EU about the uh, COP for oil price, uh, for, uh, for Russian oil? So will it help, really? Are you, are you talking about the $60 cap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I think it, it will help if it is properly implemented and enforced. Mm. Now, it, I think that all the big insurance companies, all the, the brokers, all the shipping companies uh, that are operating out of Europe, out of the United Kingdom, out of the United States, will respect the, uh, the, the, the cap and will not provide insurance and will not provide shipping if prices are set higher than that. But you and I know that uh, the Russians are very good at circumventing and you know, moving around the sanctions, and the fact that he has accumulated um, vessels, um, mm. you know, oil, oil tankers, and that mm. he's trying to set up some insurance, domestic insurance mechanism, is mm. a way for him to try to circumvent uh, the sanctions that we have imposed. I, I think that's yeah. another problem, is, is that they have uh, such a partner as Turkey. Mm -hmm. So they help them very, very, very much, and it's, it does not give us good uh, uh, success. So I think, um, uh, how we could uh, we could make our sanction policy better? Earthquake. <laughs> I think 
it's something that political <laughs> leaders have to think through. But any pressure that the US, the UK, the European Union, um, the Australians, Canada, of course, can put on all the other players will matter. Because in, in a system, if you have... You know, I think he was baiting her there. You know, I mean, exit doors or back doors through which you can escape the main sanctions, of course, it weakens the system. So I don't know whether through, um, you know, through NATO, um, Turkey can be put under pressure, but that one, that's one avenue. Turkey is playing a funny game because, you know, by, by blocking or announcing that they will block Sweden and Finland, of course, they put themselves in that good bargaining position, and it's difficult to put very much pressure on them when you ask them to vote for Sweden and Finland. Mm -hmm. But it's all the, you know, all the countries of goodwill, the coalition of the willing to support Ukraine that have to really put other, other countries under pressure. There will be, you know, there will be a G20 in India coming up soon for the finance ministers and the central bank governors, and I think it would be a good occasion to remind other, other G20 leaders of their duty for peace and their duty for stability, because if they don't respect those rules, then stability okay. is an issue. I'll, I'll make a note of that. G20? The G20? And by the way, I just want to ask you, what is, how, how is your opinion? Who has the worst really situation uh, among the EU countries now? Who has uh, suffered more? Yeah, if, if, I look at, uh, if I look at my inflation numbers, which is the barometer that I use, the countries that are closest to Russia, surprise, surprise, like the Baltic countries, <laughs> are taking a huge big hit because they were trading partners because there is a political risk that is associated with them so they are the ones that have the worst uh, numbers if you look at you know debt uh, to gdp mm. a country like greece is mm. at risk but it's not a big risk because a lot of their uh, borrowing is with a quasi uh, official well, institutions like the european stability mechanism the other country that has a high debt to gdp is italy of course italy. so i'm also worried so yep. it's a half of our loans is uh, the U.S. loans and the half is 50 percent is this is uh, from the eurozone. So it's also impact on uh, um, currency rates. And my question is, what is the maximum inflation uh, you see in Europe this year? Hmm. You know, ev everything has been a surprise uh, in terms of uh, economic projections, in terms of inflation. So it's it's hard for me to say, but the official projections that we have put inflation at around 7% for 23. And I will have to double check the numbers because I think I'm, I'm giving you a number which is a bit on the low side. It's, it's probably a little higher than that. Ooh. And this time I think it's uh, pretty hard to have uh, right forecasts. You know, the situation is uh, <laughs> growing uh, unstable. So so do you think is it possible to increase uh, uh, to increase um, rates to 4% for ECB? But that, that, you know, I wish I could tell you. I wish I had a crystal ball to say that. But I, I, I cannot um, say so for, you know, at this point in time. It's going to be a factor of impact of our action, mm -hmm. level of inflation, scope, you know, that's supply only to energy. Is it food? Is it services? Is it, we have multiple ways to measure inflation. What I know is that it will, interest rates will continue to rise inevitably. Mm -hmm. But up mm -hmm. to what point? What will be the terminal rate? When will we reach the terminal rate? That I cannot tell you. I don't know. My, my economist. Uh, my yeah. economist said. My economist said that in negative uh, forecast, interest rates uh, in ECB could reach four percent. As, as I told you, I, I do not have currently a terminal rate nor a time when we reach terminal rate. The only thing I can tell you, and the economists who are advising you, and I'm sure that they are as competent and as honest as my economist, is that it needs to go higher than where we are at the moment, because otherwise we will not manage to tame inflation. And the question is, uh, how do you think? Um, uh, what is your colleagues from? Uh, Think, uh, think about that. Do you have a conversation with them? We not only yeah we do of course have conversations. We exchange a lot. And actually, I will be seeing uh, Jay Powell tonight. We have dinner tonight. Mm. Uh, we have a meeting of the um, Bank of International Settlement in Basel, and I'm having dinner with him tonight. So yes, we do talk a lot. But you know, President, whatever is the coming out of this situation, who wins, who loses, in a way is irrelevant. What matters is that Ukraine, at the end of the day, wins. Mm. So and I think the very, the very simple view that those who have the biggest gun at the end of the day win, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very stupid, basic, uh, wild west cowboy principle. Mm -hmm. It is the case at the moment that the biggest military power in the world is the United States. So the United States is supplying the biggest shipment of weapons, it is providing a very large amount of funding, and that's the reality that we deal with. And I don't think that we can just um, argue about who wins and loses. It's you who has to do it. And we have to make a very clear plan to support you. Okay. Well, let Let's stop to talk about uh, talk about, uh, about set things. things. I'm, I'm really, really glad to see you, and, and I see you, and, and I'm glad to see a smart, a smart, smart woman at this position, and I think that you're, you're pretty, pretty nice. nice. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm also a good uh, user of uh, electronic money. So my, my question: uh, You're, you're introducing, introducing the electronic euro, euro as I know. Yeah. So yeah. how do you think? Uh, how can you do an electronic currency now? 
but, but two things. things. Number, Number one, it will be decided, decided in October. October. So, so we are preparing the ground, ground. We, we want to, to be ready, ready. Uh, we, we want to be trained, trained. But, but it will not be decided, decided until October 23. The reason I'm I like dates. Is a situation like the one we are in now. We are dependent on the supply of gas by a very unfriendly country. I don't, I don't want, want Europe, Europe to be to dependent on an, an unfriendly country's currency, currency, for instance, I don't know, you know, you know the, the Chinese, Chinese currency, currency, the Russian, the Russian currency, currency, whatever. whatever. <laughs> or, or dependent on, on a friendly currency, currency but which, which is activated, activated by, by a private, private corporate entity, entity like, like you know, you know Facebook, Facebook or like uh, Google, Google or anybody, anybody like it. I need I'm either of Bitcoin, Bitcoin too, so, so I, I, I told you when, when it started. started. <laughs> I, I hope that uh, it also work. work in the <laughs> uh, I know there are many protests in Europe uh, against uh, the electronic hero. Uh, what is the reason? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, if you look at Europe, that's different, different uh, positions. If you ask, ask in Northern, Northern Europe, Europe, for instance, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, they are quite, quite happy to see the EU Euro, Euro coming. If you ask, ask a young, young German, German uh, man, they'll say, yeah, 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 fine. Mm -hmm. As I said, I don't, I don't want Meta, Google, Google, or Amazon to set up a currency that will take over the sovereignty of Europe. I don't, I don't want a foreign currency to become the currency of trading within, within, Europe. within Europe. Europe. So we have so to we be have ready. ready. No, the, no, the problem is they don't want to be controlled. They don't want to... Yeah, but you know what, you know what? Now we, now we have in Europe this, this threshold, threshold above, above 1,000 euros, you cannot pay cash. If you do, you, do, you are on you the, the grey market. market. So you take, you take your risk. You get caught, you, get you are buying what you get. You get. But, but, you know, you know the, the, the digital, digital euro, euro is going, is going to have a limited, limited amount, amount of control. control. There will be control. You're right. Completely right. right. We are, we are considering a very, very small amount, you know, anything that is around 300, 400 euros. We could have a mechanism where there is zero control. That could, that could be dangerous. dangerous. The terrorist, terrorist attacks on France, France uh, uh, five, uh, five, uh, ten, years ten years ago, ago and highly financed, financed by those by very, very small and non credit cards, cards that we can recharge in total, in total anonymity. anonymity. So they don't want you to have any anonymity at all. My God, they don't even want to not track less than three hundred dollar transactions. They just they just want to track it all. They just want to track it all, right? And you know, if she really thinks she's on with. The president of Ukraine and she's being transparent here look you know this is an example of you implement it and we're gonna be nice in the beginning but things change right emergency circumstances come into place and then the restrictions need to be even more strong right so again you open the door and then the doors open mm -hmm. the, uh, you know that the uh, question is now now I think that it's a joke like, like a joke that the next um, uh, currency will be firewoods Euro. Will be what? Firewoods, firewoods. Oh, the next currency will be firewood. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a joke. It's like a joke from a uh, Russian side. Well, they we... can get lost. <laughs> and my question is, do you think that the policy uh, of previous authorities uh, with the IMF, I mean Poroshenko, led to a crisis? Because I got a many big, many, many uh, terrible uh, situation in economics when I became a president. So because uh, he uh, probably has uh, stole some um, some loans for Ukraine for his interests, and uh, we forced it to raise the pensions and tariffs for a long time, and it led to the critical situation, and Russia used it. Mm. You know, I think, first of all, I think the IMF did the best that it could do to help and support Ukraine. Um, you know as well as I do that the country was not in perfect shape. Uh, you know as well as I do that there were some, some very strange characters who abused the situation, who had their own militias, who had their own system, that certainly took advantage of what was um, tried both by the IMF, by the United States, in order to help Ukraine. But, you know, you cannot rewrite history. And I think that at the time, the loan by the IMF, the program that was initiated, was necessary and had it not happened, would have been devastating for Ukraine. So was it 100% well implemented? Certainly not. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. I'm really thank you to you. Thank you. Have Same a great here. day with your colleagues. You too. Okay. Thank you. Damn, that was. Oh, that was good. That was really good. I enjoyed that. Hopefully, you did as well. Seven percent inflation or higher predicted for 2023 and CBDC October 23rd, 2023. We'll see.